Look, I, I'm, I'm a bit puzzled by feminism and these modern feminism. I mean, look, my, my great-grandma was a suffragette. Mm -hmm. um, my grandma was called Sylvia after Sylvia Pankhurst. Um, I always thought that feminists used to believe in equality and, 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 and having, you know, women were discriminated against, they wanted to be equal. Now I, what I see is that women want equality, but only when it suits. They want the advantages where, where they have an advantage, like the criminal justice system where they're treated less harshly than men. But they want, so they want equality, but only when it suits. Do they, is, that, is that a fair analysis? No, that's not feminism. And, I mean, too much equality, which is what I hear from men and anti-feminists all the time, is an oxymoron. But what actual feminists are fighting for is liberation, not equality, because we don't want to be equal to men in order to be able to exploit women in brothels, uh, puke up in the streets on a Friday night, go back and bash our partners. We actually want liberation from the structures that oppress us, which means that we've got to tackle head-on male violence and the threat of male violence. And this is something that unites women all over the world. And the feminism I'm involved in, look, we're a movement, we're not a cult. We allow for differences of opinion. But we also are a social movement that has the right to define what we are. We have to have a set of aims and objectives. You can't have Margaret Thatcher and Beyonce demanding to be referred to as feminist when actually uh, they're anything but. So feminism for me means that we have to tackle the thing that affects women globally, which is male violence, and because we don't believe that men, that babies, boy babies, are born programmed to harm women, we therefore are very optimistic. In fact, feminists are men's best friends because what we say is, you know, this is not necessary your your behaviour towards women, if you choose to be violent and abusive, sexist and oppressive, is not natural, it's not innate, and you should... Julie, I'd better. sort of I, I'd sort of say, if anybody had ever asked me, I guess I would have said, in a way, I'm uh, a feminist, but I would have said, insofar as I guess I'd want independence so that I can do a job, I can go out and earn, earn my own wage, I can do uh, my uh, own thing. But I, was, but I also believe in choice, so I wouldn't say I was a divisive feminist. I don't see men as the enemy. I'd say, I've got a choice, and this is the path that I've right. uh, chosen to. But it seems to me, are you on a different different path now on feminism? Have we gone past that sort of, you know, take control of your own life and hand for independence? Now we're fighting what men as aggressors and being violent to women. Isn't that just a small percentage of men, not the whole of mankind? No, absolutely it's not all men, which is, you know, a meme that actually does make me laugh every time I see it, because as soon as you start talking about male violence, you get someone saying, but not all men. Of course not all men. But the reason why we've got single sex services, for example, the reason why we have women's prisons, women's hospital wards, all that are under threat at the moment, that we have women's changing rooms, is because enough of a minority of men, a large minority of men, do actually commit these acts of violence. We're not talking about masked marauders with knives climbing in through but bedroom windows. But then should be involved just, just the criminal uh, set, uh, you know, and the justice system rather than... Can I, can I, just, rather can than... I just pick you up on something, though, mm -hmm. Judy, on, on about this? It, according to the government's own figures, in terms of levels of domestic abuse... Mm. The highest level of domestic abuse on women is from other women in lesbian relationships. I'm afraid that, that that's is, not true. Well, it, well, it's the government official uh, figures. It's please, double. It's, it's not. Du well, Julie, they're the official. They might not be convenient figures, but they are the official I'm sorry. figures. That... Please invite me back any time as soon as we've both had a look at these official figures, so I can unpick them for you. This is a myth that's going. It's around. not a myth. It's a, the, they are the official I'll, I'll figures. Tell you, Julie. I'll tell you how we work out how domestic violence plays out. The bodies in the morgues. There's one woman killed every three days by a violent former or current ex-partner. So you're just talking about there murder? No... You're just talking about, you're no, not no, talking no. about other I, forms I, of I domestic violence? I haven't finished. Violence. I haven't finished. If you look at the figures in A&E, if you look at the fact that more, the, the um, health consequences for women of domestic violence in heterosexual relationships are huge. In fact, it's the biggest health crisis globally than cancer, than road accidents, than other uh, serious conditions and illnesses. This oh, idea I think that's a bold, that that's a bold statement, bigger other, than cancer and various other things. But, so this I find is, that hard to but this is the World Health Organization. But if we're going to move.